Hi, today we're going to talk about how to trigger SharePoint updates from email. We frequently have to update SharePoint information. The trouble is we're not always in SharePoint. A lot of times we're on the go and maybe we just have access to our cell phone and we just need something to happen quickly. An interesting alternative way to trigger updates in SharePoint is through an email trigger. Today we'll look at how to make that trigger uh, to update your SharePoint list. So now let's get SharePoint smart. So first of all, let's just explain what it is we're going to do in our example. As a consultant, I do time tracking and invoices, and I have an invoice system I want to keep up with when my customers pay for an invoice. And a lot of times when I get those payments, I'm not at my computer. I'm out at the mailbox or going to run to the bank or running an errand in my car. So I wanted an easy way to make those updates without actually being logged into SharePoint. So I'll show you some screenshots of what we're trying to do here. So this is my invoice tracking system. I grayed out some information to protect the innocent, um, but basically I have a list of customers and invoices that I've sent and I'm keeping up with when those uh, invoices are due, that type of thing. And I want to have a way to mark these as paid, um, but that coming from my email. Uh, just to show you another screen, these are some of the fields that I'm tracking on those invoices, when it's due, that type of thing. Most importantly, I want to track when it's paid. I'm, I'm looking to fill in the pay date on an invoice, indicating that it's paid based on this email that I'm going to set up. Okay, so this is how I want the email to work. I have, um, I want to have a template where if I have the subject line say set paid and I give it a customer, then a workflow will be able to interpret that information, go to the invoices list and make that update to set that most re that oldest invoice from that customer as paid. So that's what we're, looking to do. That's what we're looking to do with the workflow. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is some key information in the workflow that we're going to set up. So before we even get to that, these concepts are really uh, important to what we want to do today. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit so you guys can see what's going on. Okay. The first thing we're going to do, there is a special type of flow for when a new email arrives. I'm going to link that below the video as well as a reference to these functions. So you can trigger a flow based on properties from the email. So this is very good information. You should read this article. It'll tell you all kinds of different things additional to what I'm going to talk about in the video today. Okay. Um, so what happens is we're going to be able to interrogate the body of the email and the subject line. And I'm going to be using some string functions to get that key piece of information out of that email that I'm looking for. In my case, what I want to know is the name of the customer. And so I'm expecting a specific template to be used and I'm looking for a part of that email where it says customer colon space, and then I want to know what comes right after that. So I have a split function, which will take this email body, and it's going to give me everything right after this. Um, so if you think of this as a big sandwich, I've got the beginning of the email, the end of the email, and then what I want is right in the middle of the sandwich. And the second function is telling it okay, get rid of everything. I only, I only want the information before it gets to this first um, angle bracket. Okay, 
I could be looking for anything. In this case, I'm looking for an, uh, in a customer name. Could be looking for an invoice number, a ticket ID if it was a help ticket. Could be looking for a key term like approved. Could be all kinds of different concepts. This is for invoices. And this is the string that's read. Normally we see things formatted, but the actual string that's being interrogated includes all these all this HTML. So this is what you would see um, in the content. So those functions I showed are actually telling it to strip off um, everything on this part and then stri strip off everything beginning with this first angle bracket after that customer name. So it's basically stripping that stuff off so we can get just that key term that we want. So those concepts are important. I wanted to illustrate that first so that you'll be more comfortable when we get into the flow. All right, so now we're gonna to go to flow. So I mentioned this is a flow called trigger flow when a new email arrives. That is my trigger point, And we're gonna walk through and see just exactly what's going on. So I want to make sure this is specific just to me. Okay, so I say when it's to me and it also is from me. <laughs> I wouldn't want somebody else to be able to uh, set my invoices paid just because they um, know about this flow I created or something like that. So um, I have some low level security there. Naturally, if um, you are doing something really secure, you know, that's probably not appropriate, but that's, that is a way that you're making sure that it's actually the proper person making the update. And then this is a key part to it. Whoop, I hit the wrong button. Okay. Um, I just wanted to zoom in. There we go. There's a subject filter and that's really important for us. I want to make sure that it's only listening in the case where the subject equals set paid in all caps. Okay. So that's kind of a clue to this flow. Oh, this is that special one that I need to look at and I, I need to do something here. Okay. First one's easy. I'm declaring a variable string and I'm just grabbing the body of the email. This is available to you from that first action at the top. And that's that string that I just showed you in my text editor. Okay, it's all that gobbledygook, the HTML formatting, it's the whole thing. So now what we have to do is strip out the parts that we don't need. Okay, so then I declare some other variables. So I did the next thing I said, okay, Give me the customer start, okay? So this is the part where it's gonna, remember I used the metaphor of a sandwich. We wanna get rid of the top part of the sandwich. I don't need the bun, I just want the, the meat in the middle. So I am stripping everything off the beginning all the way up until after, in my case, customer colon space. It'll just lop that off and then once I have that, I can look at that chunk, which is basically the middle of the sandwich and the bottom. And I want to take off the bottom of the sandwich. I say, I don't need all this crazy HTML and stuff beginning with this um, angle bracket. Um, basically, go ahead and get rid of it. And if you want to understand that better, that is a string function called split. Um, and it just basically divides the string based on the criteria that you get. And what I get out of that is the part that I want, that key word, which in my case is just the name of the customer. Okay, and then um, at that point, what I wanna do is go into SharePoint. Now that I have that key information, this is a simple SharePoint update. I wanna go to the invoices list and I'm gonna do a filter and I want to get the oldest invoice for this customer. I'm gonna set that um, I'm going to make an update and I'm going to set the pay date as today automatically. And this part is pretty plain vanilla at this point. I'm at that point, I want to send an email back. I want to get an email. So if I'm out on the go and I send this, I'd like to know that the system found the record that was supposed to be updated. Send me some kind of confirmation back. And that's just what happens at the end of this flow. It sends an email 
and it tells the invoice date that was set as paid and what the amount was. It's just basically confirmation I did what you expected me to do. Um, so that's the end of the flow. And that's really pretty much it. So there's really a lot of possibilities here. Okay, so what we wanna do is start with something simple and you know, you could be an approval or some kind of simple SharePoint list. You should start with a basic version of this and then that can open doors and let you do things that are a little more complicated. Um, but this is definitely something you should try to experiment with. This is an alternative approach, a way to help people on the go, especially useful for people that may be on site at a customer or in their car and they just need to make a quick update and maybe they're not going to be in SharePoint. And so email can be a way for that to happen. So hope, hopefully you found that interesting. It gives you some ideas and you can go experiment and try this yourself. And check below the video for links so you can read more about this email trigger and also take a look at those string functions I referenced. Thank you.